Believe in yourself, cause it starts with you And then everyone else will believe you too And if it looks like you're the only believer around Just keep on believing, don't put yourself down Just believe Our guest this week grew up in Farmington Hills, Michigan and was in an automobile accident in 2001, which left her paralyzed from the chest down. In 2007, she, her parents, and her husband started Walk the Line to SCI Recovery, which is a physician-directed therapy center in Southfield, Michigan. She was just named Oakland County's Elite 40 Under 40 winner. Her name, Erica Colston. And I'm Jack Crisula, and this is Anything is Possible on News Talk 760 WJR. I'm Jack Crisula. This is Anything is Possible. And we're talking to Erica Colston, the president and director of operations of Walk the Line to SCI Recovery. Erica, welcome. A real honor to have you. Hi, thank you, Jack. I'm honored to be here. Can we start by talking about your childhood and your mom and your dad? Absolutely. My parents, Fred and Rita Nader, are amazing. I grew up in Farmington Hills, Michigan, and a very happy, normal childhood. Um, I graduated from North Farmington High School in 1996 and Western Michigan University in 2000. What's the biggest thing you learned from your mom? And what's the biggest thing you've learned from your dad? From my mom, I learned to be independent and to not rely on um, anybody for anything. She's a real fighter, and I think I learned that from her the most. From my dad, he's um, he always took us to events where we would give back to the community Um things like that. So I learned sort of the giving portion of my personality from him. You earn a political science degree from Western Michigan. What were your goals when you got out of school? And what was your first job out of college? When I got out of school, I, um, I had intended on going to law school throughout college and changed my mind at the very end and decided that I'd wanted to explore other options. And I ended up in San Francisco and I worked for a company called California Peace Action. They're a nonprofit um, anti-nuke lobbying organization. And I ran their Canvas office and I worked for them for about a year. And then I moved to Los Angeles to run their Los Angeles office. And I was there only for about five weeks until I was injured on October 7th. October 7th, 2001. You're 23 years old. It's your mom and dad's 25th wedding anniversary. Tell us about that day. That day was a lot of fun. I was always, it was always great coming home um, to stay at my parents' house. I would get pampered by my mom, which was awesome. She would cook and everything. So it was, it was a really good trip. We first had the ceremony portion and, and my parents renewed their vows. And for the first time they were married in the Catholic church together. So it was really special. And they were married in the Catholic Church at the church where we grew up in. So it was really wonderful. They had a nice party afterwards, and we went back to their house with a few family members and whatnot. And later on in the evening, you know, my brother, uh, my brother Jim and I were really close, and so it was nice to to see him as well. It was a short trip. I was only supposed to be home for three or four days. So he wanted a snack, and he wanted to drive up to Taco Bell, our old stomping grounds at 13 and Orchard Lake. And I thought, what the hell, I'll go for a ride with him. And, you know, he had this cute little sports car, convertible two-seater, and thought that would be fun. And we went racing through our neighborhood out to Middle Belt and thought, that was fun. And he said, you want to do it again on the way back in? I was like, yeah, great. And uh, we went to Taco Bell and 
came back and sure enough we did it again and he was driving in our neighborhood that we that I grew up in was really dark kind of windy and he just was going too fast and he lost control of the car and we rolled and um and that was that and he was you know he had some neck uh, injuries that I think still bother him but other than that you know nothing really physically damaging to him I obviously I was paralyzed and um, C6 C7 and that was sort of the start of the of that journey paralyzed from the chest down all right let's jump ahead to 2003 and you go to Portugal to meet with the late Carlos Lima to perform a special surgery I think the first American to ever have the surgery done I was. I was the ninth person and the first American. And my dad had found Dr. Lima online. He was, since the day I was injured, searching tirelessly the internet. And he would literally, you know, hound people and fi somehow find their home phone numbers and their cell phone numbers. And he was calling all around and he found Dr. Lima. And at the time, we were also looking into another doctor that was in China. And Dr. Lima's procedure. Uh, uses olfactory mucus mucosa tissue from your own uh, from your own body so this was an you know an autologous adult stem cell so there's you know no risk of um, rejection it's a fairly safe procedure and after a few months of sort of learning about the procedure vetting him out with the doctors in the United States we decided that was you know my best option for some sort of some sort of um spark in my recovery i was you know at this time i'd been before i went i had been injured about a year and a half and i was doing therapy probably you know at at a facility five days a week at home seven days a week anywhere between six and eight hours a day and was not was seeing not really the dramatic results that I wanted. So, you know, I figured I needed to do something drastic. And when we come back, we'll ask Erica about a trip she took to San Diego that also changed your life. And I'm Jack Rasula, and this is Anything is Possible on News Talk 760 WJR. Welcome back to Anything is Possible. I'm Jack Crisula, and we're with Erica Colston, who, on October 7, 2001, was in an automobile accident, suffered a C6-7 spinal cord injury, leaving her paralyzed from the chest down. So we jump ahead a couple years, Erica, and you go to San Diego, and there's a young guy there from Boston, living in San Diego, who's taking care of his brother, Kabir, who was a quadriplegic. And the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I ended up in San Diego about nine months after my injury for a recovery program that was nothing was nothing non-traditional was available in the Detroit area at the time. So I went out to San Diego with my mom and we were there for about a year and a half or two years. And just before either just before I went to Portugal or just after I went to Portugal in 2003, Ira's brother Kabir started at this program. And Ira says that he and I had talked before I remember us talking, but, <laughs> um, but he would bring his brother to therapy and hang around. And I, I guess I remember seeing him, but our first sort of, our first moment that I remember us talking was at a baseball game and I had my uh, my cousin Joe with me and he's kind of a big guy and tattoos and whatnot and Ira apparently thought he was my boyfriend and he decided he was gonna talk to me anyway because he had this whole conversation planned because he knew I was into politics and you know social stuff and so he had this whole conversation plan so he thought I'm gonna just talk to her anyway and so he somehow got my attention and we chatted the whole night and kind of carried on and became friends for we were friends for 
over a year before we ever started dating or anything. And so, you know, it was really easy and comfortable. We were already good friends. We already knew a lot about each other. He obviously had experience with somebody with a spinal cord injury. So that made me feel at ease. And he's just really supportive. A 99-year-old woman a few years ago, Erica, told me that a man chases a woman until she catches him. And the guy's caught long before he ever figures it out. So that's the real story. <laughs> um, okay, he leaves his brother, and he moves from San Diego to Detroit. You are a sales lady. How'd that ever happen? We were uh, in San Diego, and we had actually gone back to Detroit for uh, for a while and then went back to San Diego for the winter. And it came time, you know, I, I realized that enough was enough. I really couldn't keep my parents separated for that long. And um, so I, we just decided to go back to Detroit so that it could be around family and uh, and just further my recovery at home and, and work on some things at home. And it was really, you know, it was really kind of something that we just talked about one day. And he said, you know, I want to come. I want to find out how I can make sure my brother's okay. And I feel comfortable leaving him in San Diego. And, you know, I'm ready to start my life. And that's you. So he moved to Detroit about six months after I got back. Speaking of family, July 2007, you, your mom and your dad, and Ira start Walk the Line. How'd that ever happen? Walk the Line was born out of necessity. Um, I needed a place to continue my recovery therapy, and we had, you know, very early on, when we were looking for a recovery program and it was difficult to find one, we dreamt up what ours would look like one day when we started one. And at the various programs I went through over the years until 2007, we sort of cataloged what was good and what we would change. And in, you know, probably in May or June, we had finally the idea that we needed to do it. And took us about three or four weeks to get it started. We started really small and with some really basic equipment. And we had this idea of a family run business that would be innovative, creative and aggressive and fun. And all of these things that none of the programs were for me. And it was, it's just snowballed into this real phenomenon, I think. I mean, it's amazing when I'm there. Walk the Line. Why that name? Hmm. Well, you learn interesting things when you, you know, all of a sudden have to engage in the traditional medical world. I, I grew up very healthy person until I was injured. And even, even now, I'm very healthy you know, the injury is the thing that is mo my biggest medical problem. Um, but you do have to still interact with physicians and uh, medical-related professionals, and they don't always look at recovery or alternative therapies the way that you might, um, or the way that I do, I guess. And so you do have to sort of walk this line of you have to exist in the traditional medical world because you need them for certain things. But at the same time, you have to be on the outside of it because if you're not, you're not going to find what you're looking for. And I know that there's a lot of conditions and people that find themselves in that situation right now with cancer and other issues where, you know, the doctors and the traditional model is just not working. And you do have to go outside and look, whether it's other countries or other states or whatever it is. But you have to be your own advocate. How does Walk the Line, Erica Colston, compare or differ from other rehab programs? We're different in so many ways. Um, 
not only is what we do different, our therapy protocol is different. We do most of our activities in load-bearing positions, which is not common for people with spinal cord injuries. Because we're sitting down the majority of the time, our bone density can be lower, our blood circulation can be um, a little sluggish, you, you have a whole other host of issues, and people are less open to loading the joints and the bones. They're afraid of fracturing or hurting something. Um, we do it safely and we do it well and our clients have amazing progress, including myself. And so what we do is different. Um, but I think probably what we do that's so different is actually believe in what our clients can do. And, and we're there and our whole staff is there really to help them meet their goals. No one says you can't or you won't or you're paralyzed. Um, there is no goal that is ridiculous or unattainable. It's just a matter of getting you to that goal. Tell us about your 20-person team. The Walk the Line team, they are so amazing. We have most of them have been with us for at least three years um, or more. And they are the hardest working, most dedicated, most compassionate people that I've ever met. They build relationships with clients and they really truly care about how they're doing and how they can help them. And I think that they're able to empathize and and really work to motivate each client the way that, in a way that motivates that individual person in order to help them get the greatest result. And they're just tireless. I mean, they work just tirelessly. We're talking to Erica Colson, and I'm Jack Rasul, and this is Anything Is Possible on News Talk 760 WJR. This is Anything is Possible. I'm your host, Jack Crisula, and we're with Erica Colston, who's the president and director of operations of Walk the Line to SCI Recovery. If you want to learn more, www.walktheline2scirecovery.com. I was impressed when I went and spent time at Walk the Line. Here's Ira there with you in the same office your husband, your mom and your dad in the next office. So I left saying, wow, it's very rare (laughs) that a mom and dad, husband and wife can work. But now I find out you've been remodeling your house, you and Ira, for a year, and you're living with mom and dad for the last year. That's impossible. How does it work with all this family? Um, it, it works. It, it works actually pretty well. We, because this is something that the four of us are so passionate about and it's so, you know, it's so close to what we live with and what we do, it's actually really easy. And even though Ira and I share an office, we're rarely in there at the same time. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's actually really easy and I really admire, you know, I admire my parents and Ira for stepping up and really making this whole situation um, a part, you know, a true part of their lives and helping other people that are in similar situations like myself because you really, you know, you, you learn a lot when you go through an injury like this and you become really dependent on people for most things that you didn't have to be dependent on people for. Um, And it's difficult to do those things and not have family around. And so in some ways, I see how it's harder. And sometimes it is harder, you know, when we're around each other so much. But in other ways, it actually helps me be more successful. And I think it helps us 
get closer to each other and to what we're doing because you know they're just really supportive of of me and and everybody that's there speaking of which erica colson helping other people you have 40 active clients at walk the line tell us about one or two of them oh only pick one or two there's so many great ones i absolutely admire all of our clients and we have across the whole spectrum i mean we have a little boy right now he's nine and I believe our oldest client is about 70. And in there you have teachers and retired, you know, deputy sheriffs and um, counselors and OTs and writers. And these are just amazing people. And to see not only the physical changes that they go through, but the psychological and the emotional changes that happen is really as remarkable to me as the physical you know what occurs with them and and what they're able to do with their lives is um is nothing short of remarkable when you consider the situation but we have um we have right now a gentleman that's been with us for a few months uh named rick and he is such a fighter he comes all the time whenever he's scheduled he comes three days a week He's a deputy re sheriff retired from Oakland County. And he just, you know, he comes and he is all fired up when he gets there. He's ready to go. You know, he wants to be pushed as hard as possible for those three hours. And that's really difficult, you know, um, to do that. And I know because, you know, I do it as well. And you... You sort of have to psych yourself up. It's like it's like being in a game or some sort of competition where you need to perform. I mean, sometimes, you know, I even find myself listening to music on the way. Like, I need to find that song, you know, that motivates me, whatever it is. Sometimes it's Billy Joel. Sometimes it's, you know, something on the radio, whatever. Um, and so I really admire him for that because I know that it's it's difficult. Um and we have another one of our clients, uh, Jeremy, that drives from Toledo, Ohio. And he, you know, works extremely hard and he wants to be pushed. And he is doing amazing things, talking to kids about, you know, living with disabilities and, and all of this stuff that, you know, you see people. And it's great to be in an environment where it's just not enough to be living. You know, all of our, the majority of our clients, you know, they, they learn or they evolve into a mind frame where they want to be doing more. They want to be giving back. They want to be educating people about living with a disability and be out in the community. And it really takes a lot of courage to do that. On July 11th, 2012, on the fifth anniversary of Walk the Line, you wrote this. In the earlier days of my injury, I dreamt of a place where I could do anything, where nothing was impossible. In this daydream, which I had quite often, there was a community of people just like me. We talked, we laughed, we encouraged each other. We triumphed. We trained often and we trained hard, and those training us believed in us. When I look around the gym floor of Walk the Line, it is that place. Truly amazing things happen daily, some small, some more substantial, but every day is something. Maybe this sounds silly or cheesy, and for those of us who frequent WTL, this may even become mundane. But isn't that a feat in itself, to be in a place where the unbelievable, the seemingly impossible, happens so often that it becomes ordinary? What's your dreams, Erica? for Walk the Line? I would like Walk the Line and, and what we do to be the standard of care. When you're, when you're injured, you know, I, I would have loved to have something, some environment or exposure to something like Walk the Line because everyone handles it a little bit differently, but for the majority of us um, that are injured, we're between 18 and 35, and it's a big 
life change. And for me, you know, I can only speak for myself. It was very hard to deal with initially. And it's only been through finding a a home and a community in Walk the Line that I've really gotten back to really feeling like myself. And, And that has been really what's saved me. And so I guess my dream for Walk the Line is for it to be ordinary, for everyone, for people to walk in and be like, yeah, I know there's a wheelchair hanging from the ceiling. Duh. You know, that's what people do when they don't need them anymore. I think that's so cool. I would love that. Erica Colson, what's the biggest thing you've learned because of Walk the Line in the last five and a half years? Anything is possible. That's why I loved the uh, the name of your show, because that's what I've learned. Anything is possible. I've seen amazing feats from people, um, and sometimes myself, and 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 it's just the most wonderful thing to see not only when something like that happens, but how the person reacts when it happens and how the people around them react. And it's infectious and it just makes you feel good. Speaking of dreams, when you're in your office and you're at your desk and you look at a wall, there's a sheet. It's a picture of Bryce Canyon National Park. And it says, I will walk in Bryce 9 14 13. When I was in my impatient at U of M, my dad and I would roam the halls on the weekends because the hospitals are deserted on the weekends. So we would get in my power chair and just kind of roam around. And we both, we were roaming one day and we both stopped down this hallway where there was a photography exhibit we both stopped at the same photo and kind of turned and looked at it and it was this gorgeous yellowy gold color rocky and everything and we just said we're gonna go there you know one day we're gonna hike it and so we decided we should look and see where it was at (laughs) Um, it turns out it was at Bryce Canyon it was a picture of Bryce Canyon and ever since then, that's been one of our dreams and one of our goals. And we have um, little uh, laminated pictures of it in our wallets, um, my family. <laughs> and and then most recently, just a few months back, we started an I Will board at Walk the Line for clients to post their goals and for others to be helping them um in in thinking about their goals and achieving them. And so I was the first one to put one of my goals up and I thought, you know what? If this is going to happen, I just need to pick a date and I need to put it out there and and let it be. So that will be the first trip. I, I don't know if it'll be the last trip, but it'll definitely be the first trip. We're talking to Erica Colston and I'm Jack Russell and this is anything is possible on News Talk 760 WJR. I'm Jack Rasula. This is Anything is Possible. And we're talking to Erica Colston, who on February 7th was named Oakland County's Elite 40 Under 40 winner. And you were the first American to go to Portugal for that special surgery. And I think you're the first American to ever leave L. Brooks Patterson speechless. (laughs) Um, The day you were named was also the state of the county address, and you introduced Del Brooks and you spoke. What did you say? It was a tall order to introduce Al Brooks Patterson. He not only has a long history, but he has done so much in his life for Oakland County. And it was hard to fit it in two and a half minutes or whatever I had, but... Um, but you know he, he's a man that I think speaks his reputation speaks for itself and I spent some of the time singing his praises about all of his 
amazing programs that he started in Oakland County. But but more so important for me to get across was what his mentality has meant to me and how I've incorporated that into my life. And one thing that I learned in researching him and everything that he's done is the amount of giving back that he not only does himself, but that he encourages other people to do. And I I do believe that that is the footprint for success for the future. It's not enough for us to be successful ourselves. We have to help other people along the way. And I admire that the most about him. And you know, the Elite 40 program is a really good example of that. It's a way, you know, in just that night um, and over the next year, he'll be bringing together 40 of Oakland County's best and brightest. And after meeting most of them that night, you know, it's hard to believe that I won because there's some amazing people in there and they do amazing work. And, um, you know, I, I think that that program will just add to his legacy. Anyone that meets you, Eric, and spends a little time with you is not amazed that you won. Um, when you put your head on the pillow that night, what did you think? Oh, I thought, Ira, pinch me. <laughs> you know, like I said, it uh, when I was first injured, I was devastated from, you know, Physically, it was difficult for me and and getting used to p- needing people for basic things. Um, psychologically, it was different. All of those, you know, all of those things are hard. So to know where I had come from, which was probably, you know, the deepest, darkest place that I had ever been, and to literally feel like I was on top of the world that night was, it was amazing. Talk to us, Erica about the human spirit. I think that we've all got this thing inside of us. Maybe it's the human spirit. I don't know. But, you know, it's, for me, I feel like at the very darkest moment is really when I realized that I had to figure out how to get back to who I was, who I was before the injury, um, who I was at that time, and and who I wanted to be. And it took a lot of soul searching. And you know, in the end, I just thought, you know what, I'm a I'm a fighter, and I can do this. And I think that the the human spirit is is undeniable in all of us. It's just a matter of what what really sparks it for you. We're talking to Erica Colston. If you want to learn more, www.walktheline2scirecovery.com. Erica, talk to us about being tested beyond what a person believes they are capable of handling. Oh, um, I think that, you know, for most of us in our lives, we will experience something that makes us feel that way, unfortunately. Hopefully for some people, it's not at the age of 23 or younger than that. But I do, you know... For me, being injured and going, being on this journey has been a a test. And, you know, sometimes you don't know if you're going to come out on top. You're not really sure. And you doubt yourself. It's a long road. You're not really sure what the end game is for you. But I can honestly say I... I'm better for what happened to me. And I think that that's what that saying is all about. Um, To be tested beyond what you can handle. And then right at that very end where it's your breaking point, you know, something kicks in and you just, you save yourself. 
when I came to see you at Walk the Line, it was very obvious to see how you're helping these 40 clients on the physical side. How do you help with the mental aspect? We try to make it an open community with a family feel to it. You know, we truly do feel like all of our employees, our clients, our family. And in addition to that, uh, I started a peer group last year. We meet once a month. And for those that attend, myself included, it's really a time to, you know, talk about what we deal with. We share tips. We, you know, talk about you know, which restaurants are the most accessible? Where do you go if you need a good bathroom? Um, all the things that are most important to us. And, um, but you know, it's a good bonding time for us and a good time for us to, to really be with people that understand what, what you're going through and to share those thoughts with them and to be encouraged by them and to be challenged by them. And, you know, the community that exists at Walk the Line, whether they come to the peer group or not, is just so supportive. And that's really, you know, that's been the greatest gift for me. And I think the greatest gift that I've been able to give the clients as well. Well, you're a great gift to everybody that meets you. Thank you. We have to be God's arms and legs. And I've met few, if any, that do that better than you do, Erica and keep up the fabulous work. Thank you. Please join us next Sunday. Until then, I'm Jack Rasula. Thanks for listening. And make it a great week because with God, anything is possible. Spawn.